A 20-year journey is nearing its end. But for the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, the work is far from over. The CTBTO must first deploy two triplets of underwater microphones called hydrophones in one of the most remote places on Earth, the ocean floor halfway between Africa and Antarctica. When completed, Hydroacoustic Station No. 4 at the Crozet Islands will join the CTBTO International Monitoring System to detect and alert the world of nuclear testing. Installing a hydroacoustic station is a complex ocean engineering task. The hydroacoustic system we're installing at Crozet is one of six hydroacoustic stations. But these hydroacoustic stations are part of the International Monitoring System, which has over 300 stations listening for potential nuclear tests around the globe. We're moving towards the final stages now of installing the HO4 station, but we were working in the roaring 40s, so the weather can be very unpredictable. Those places, the roaring 40s, are legendary among sailors and people who work at sea as some of the most difficult oceans in the world. You have what is called an unlimited fetch, currents that are also merging, coming down from South Africa, merging with circumpolar currents, that go all around the world, really undisturbed. In these difficult conditions was really uh, something that put a lot of stress on everybody, on all the teams. You know that you're not afforded, you're not allowed many mistakes. Crozet is not only a harsh environment above the sea surface, it's also a harsh environment underwater. In the previous installation, we managed to, uh, to get the station installed. Uh, and the problem we faced was uh, longevity. The first design that we had uh, did not use uh, cables and uh, that were uh, sufficiently robust. But we knew that uh, we had a mission to accomplish, that was to, uh, to install that station. Despite the difficulties, despite the, uh, the harsh environment, uh, the complexity of, uh, of the project, we had to do it. We have to be very careful loading our system on. We have a lot of cables connecting the system together. There's also some delicate electronics, the laser systems, etc. We have specialist crane operators and 10 people, 10 people plus, uh, supporting the, the loading. Come on, come on, guys. Okay, you gonna move this? The system is tested at every logistical point along the way. It's tested in California where it's manufactured. It's tested again on the ship at Baltimore. And then we transit to the cable factory in Portsmouth. We have 120 kilometers of cable and it's integrated into the system and then it's tested again. Arriver à Crozet avec ses centaines de manchots, c'est magique comme, comme arrivée. Cette réserve naturelle a 
énormément d'importance pour la France. Elle permet de redonner aux îles leur caractère originel. Et c'est quelque chose d'extrêmement important. Cette nouvelle installation nous a été confrontés à un nouveau problème. Elle répond donc à des lois spécifiques. La protection de la réserve naturelle fait que les TAF avaient mis une personne pendant toute l'installation à nous accompagner afin de vérifier que toutes les opérations que nous faisions ne gênaient pas les animaux. Et donc c'est une coordination continue, cette personne était continuellement sur la plage, ça complique les, les opérations euh, techniques, mais c'est quand même très bien pour la nature. Several experts advised us that the good time to be there would be between December and February. However, it turns out that December was just apparently one of the worst ones I've ever had on record. Whoa. What was happening there was that there were these systems brewing up south of South Africa and being launched by the wind towards us like frisbees. These were freezing cold hurricanes with snow, hail, and the wind starts to be about more than 100 miles an hour. You have to go down and walk on all fours and work your way up because dinner is up at the base. <laughs> So the total installation will take about seven days. There's one day of a quaint for the ship, and then we're laying a triplet to the north and a triplet to the south. Each triplet is on about 50 kilometers of cable running out from the island. We have a particular position where each of those hydrophones will go in. We have routes which the ship must follow. It's all pre-programmed so the ship knows exactly what it's doing and how to do it. We had high resolution bathymetry a survey carried out, understanding all the different features that we have on the seafloor to optimize the, uh, the cable routes. Uh, so weather prediction systems have dramatically uh, improved, providing us pretty good forecast so that we can interrupt uh, the work we do anytime and in such a way that you can cope with those difficult weather conditions. Let's see the boats moving, uh, pitching and rolling, and see each one of these nodes weighs approximately five tons. And so what you can't have is it to get away from you because it'll swing and damage everything on the deck. So the system, we've made it more robust. We've improved the launch system. We've made the nodes themselves um, more robust. Um, so that we can deploy in heavier weather. So this is actually will be the, the eighth installation I've been on. This installation has by far taken the most planning, the most preparation of any of the installations we've done so far. So once the cables are landed from the cable ship and the cable ship goes out to deploy first one triplet and then the other, and we have done some preliminary checks from the island, we radio that to the ship and then the ship gives the OK and releases the floats that pull the hydrophone up from the anchor that's on the seafloor to the intended depth. And then, bang, you see these things arrive at their intended height and then you start finally seeing data. So you start hearing whales, you start... You suddenly have eyes underwater. Because the island station HL4 was an important accomplishment of the International Monitoring System Division. It's a very big accomplishment for the CTPTO. We have already completed 90% of the infrastructures of the International Monitoring System. Any country, if they attempt to make the nuclear test, then they should know it would be detected and recorded by International Monitoring System Division stations. 
CTBTO is probably the only organization that can monitor the world oceans 24-7 and we are very glad to continue the collaboration with the scientific community. Studies related to underwater seismic activity, underwater uh, volcano monitoring, marine mammal vocalization. We are the guardians of a treasure of data. There are so many things that have progressed that it made it possible to do it this time. But in many ways you feel also like you pulled it off. Because it doesn't matter in a place like that how much technology you have, how much progress there has been. You see that nature can be so strong that it's a, you just don't matter. And you have to be able to surf it out, ride it out, find the right moment, try to get it done. And if it all works, you've pulled it off and you've already been very fortunate. Thank you.